Hello students, I am Talika Banerjee. Today, I bring you a learning module in BSc Forensic Science on behalf of the content writers, Dr. G. S. Sodi and myself on an important unit of Forensic Ballistics, which is External Ballistics, in which we will discuss in brief about the concept of external ballistics along with the effect of vacuum, air resistance and gravitational pull on trajectory of bullet. We will also discuss about various ways of computing trajectory parameters along with the concept of yaw and drift. We will wind up this module with discussion on automated system of trajectory computation and ballistics data management. Let's start our module with a look at what we are going to learn today. First of all is the introduction. Then we will move on to effect on trajectory. Next is computation of trajectory parameters, yaw and stability, drift, automated system of trajectory computation and ballistic data management and lastly with the conclusion. As we know that ballistics comprises of three elements that is internal, external and terminal ballistics. So external ballistics deals with the motion of projectiles or bullet exiting from the muzzle end of the weapon to the target or till it drops down under the influence of gravity. The trajectories of projectiles are parabolic in form but would differ in curvatures and lengths. The study of external ballistics assumes great importance due to its contribution, especially in the following studies. First is determination of different kind of ranges, namely fatal range, effective range and extreme range. Next, reconstruction of sequence of events in different cases involving determination of angle of firing problems involving ricochet of bullets that is the deviation of bullets from its normal flight path problems relating to safe zones or danger portions or danger spaces there are three basic considerations regarding flight of projectiles which i will be mentioning here in brief first is trajectory it means the path of the bullet from the muzzle to the striking point on the target and it is in the form of a parabola. Then the flight of the projectiles of all the projectiles whether through the air or in the vacuum without any air resistance and it is governed by Newton's laws of motion. Third many factors influence the flight of the bullet but the two main factors are gravitational pull of the earth which brings it to the ground or target and resistance of air which reduces its velocity during the gyrostatic motion. First we will take up trajectory of a bullet in vacuum. Let a bullet be fired from a firearm in the direction OZ at an angle alpha with the horizon with a velocity V as is shown on your screen. If there are no factors influencing the initial velocity V like air resistance or gravitational pull of the earth as can happen in space the projectile would travel in a straight line covering equal distances in every second. According to Newton's first law of motion, a body at rest or in motion would continue to be in that position unless some force is applied to change that position. Thus the positions of the bullet during 4 seconds are shown at A, B, C and D after covering distances V. 2V, 3V and 4V respectively. The velocity V of the bullet is along the direction of OZ. Hence, 
its velocity towards direction Ox and Oy would be V cos alpha and V sin alpha respectively. Next taking up effect of air resistance and gravitational pull. In actual practice both air resistance and gravitational pull plays a very important role and can greatly influence the motion of projectiles and to illustrate this point some cases of firing in air I will be discussing here. First people celebrate different occasions like marriages, festivals and victories in court cases by firing weapons in air to express their happiness. Sometimes crowd needs to be dispersed and police fires in air to disperse the same. Manufacturer of firearms and ballistic experts may fire in air in connection with the technical work and concerning weapons. Criminals may use firearms in cases involving homicides. So the effect of air resistance and gravitational pull would be discussed together to know the change in the trajectory of bullet in air. Air will offer resistance to the moving bullet resulting in change or decrease in its velocity. The gravitational pull will make a further change in the path which will attain the form of a parabola as is shown on your screen. Positions of bullet shown at points A, B, C and D are in case of vacuum firing. But the position will change when firing takes place in air as air offers resistance to the bullet when it is moving through the air and decreases its velocity and hence the distance travelled would be lesser giving rise to new positions such as A dash, B dash, C dash and D dash. Gravitational pull will bring the bullet downwards whose trajectory forms a parabola. New positions of the bullet as a result of air resistance and bullet drop will be E, F, G and H to give the trajectory a form of parabola. The exact shape of the trajectory can be predetermined by including additional factors like shape of the bullet and its sectional density which can be defined as if I am talking about sectional density of a bullet it is equal to weight of the bullet divided by diameter square. The difference in air resistance is referred to in ballistics as form factor. The efficiency of the flight of the projectile depends upon its sectional density. The greater the sectional density, the better is the efficiency. Lead is therefore a very good material for the manufacturing of projectiles. Next vacuum trajectories and air trajectories. Both vacuum trajectories and air trajectories are important in terms of external ballistics. Vacuum trajectories have assumed great importance in space travel but derivations and formulations applicable to vacuum trajectories cannot be applied to the real trajectories in air and for a small arms ammunition. At best it could be a rough estimate in case of extremely low velocity projectiles. The firing of guns in air is a frequent phenomenon in several cases that I have already mentioned you namely police firing in air for dispersing of crowd or use by experts and research works in the field of forensic ballistics. In forensic science frequent examination of improvised firearms is required as they are used in many criminal cases involving homicides and murders and this may involve firing in the air. Many people use firearms in air to pay respect to national flag. Both non-standard and standard weapons are used for committing crime or during the commission of crime. Where air 
does play an important part and hence the study of external ballistics is an important feat with respect to trajectories both in air as well as in vacuum. Next, we will be talking about the effect of projectile on trajectory. Trajectory of a projectile gets affected with the shape of the bullet because different shapes of the bullet face different air resistances. Some overcome air resistance better than others depending on the type of bullet you are firing from that specific firearm. A projectile suffers setback in its movement from many factors and some of them I will be discussing here. First is the resistance from head that is the nose on position of the bullet. Then the base drag and third factor is the skin friction that is the body friction of the bullet. So far as the skin resistance is concerned, it occurs due to the interaction of air and the metal molecule, but its magnitude is very small and is considered to be negligible. As far as base drag is concerned, it results from the backward sucking of the projectile due to vacuum created by it when it moves in the forward direction. The forward movement of the bullet creates vacuum and hence a base drag. When the projectile is given a shape such as in case of a boat tailed bullet, the base drag gets reduced considerably. The head resistance is the most significant of all the factors. The head resistance force is a force which acts on a moving body or projectile. Since this retarding force depends on the head area called as the projection area that becomes more when head area is more and less when the head area is less as head resistance is directly proportional to the projection area or head area. It has resulted in great popularity of fuses. These are called as Spitzer bullets. To measure the efficiency of the shape of a bullet so as to overcome air resistance, it is done in terms of form factor or coefficient of reduction, which can be determined experimentally by comparing the retardation of the projectile under investigation with a standard projectile or utilizing other methods. Apart from shape, there is another important factor requiring consideration and that is uniformity of projectile structure. It is therefore absolutely essential that center of shape must coincide with center of gravity to avoid oscillation of the bullet during the flight as well as in case of irregular trajectories. If this condition is not met, the trajectory will become irregular and will strike at a point away from the defined point on the target. Non-uniformity can also result due to non-uniformity of jacket of the bullet or improper molding of the leg case or presence of bubbles in the projectile that is it can be a bullet or a pellet or shot. The air resistance will affect the trajectory of a bullet or projectile by reducing its velocity and by pushing it in the direction it is blowing. The resistance of air depends on its density as well as temperature. Thinner the air, the lesser will be the air resistance. Higher temperatures of atmosphere tend to decrease the air resistance. There are many trajectory parameters. Their determination will be followed on later in this lecture. They are first is the vertical range and maximum vertical range. Second is drop of the bullet. Third remaining velocity. Fourth horizontal range. Fifth 
the striking angle and lastly velocity of escape. Before discussing about evaluation of these parameters, it is necessary that various terms used during evaluation are properly explained. So let us take an example. Let a bullet be projected from a point O in the direction OC as shown on your screen, where OX represents maximum horizontal range and horizontal axis. OY represents the vertical axis. Angle COX represents angle of projection. This angle of projection is the projection angle by which the projectile has been projected. Curve ODX represents the trajectory or the path traced by the bullet. OAC is the direction of projection of bullet. Cx represents the bullet drop. Dz represents the mid-range height. Angle OXB represents angle of impact. Next, about the ballistic coefficient. Ballistic coefficient is usually represented by capital C and indicates the ability of the projectile to overcome air resistance and its efficiency in flight. The sectional density is not the only factor affecting the retardation or the degree of velocity loss due to air of a bullet as shape of the bullet also plays a very important part. If form factor is taken into consideration and sectional density is divided by it, the term so obtained is called as the ballistic coefficient. That is, C is equals to W divided by ID square, where C represents the ballistic coefficient. A small w represents the weight of the bullet. A small i represents form factor and a small d is the diameter of the bullet. Next is form factor and it is basically a measure of how streamlined a bullet is. Thus, the larger the ballistic coefficient, the better the bullet will retain its velocity and lower the bullet drop for any given distance. Dear students, now let us take an example. Sectional density of 0.38 inches special bullet having a diameter of 0.357 inches and weight 150 grams will be 12.39 grams per inch square. A much lighter bullet, 12.5 grams having the same caliber will give a sectional density of 125 grams divided by a factor of 0 0.357 into 0 0.357 which is further equivalent to approximately 980 grams per inch square. Sectional density of the lighter bullet is lower indicating lower carrying capacity. Although caliber of both bullets is the same, their carrying capacities are different. Next, we will be talking about vertical range determination. It has been clear earlier that a projectile when projected at an angle alpha to the horizontal axis with the velocity v will have certain components. The very first component is the horizontal component which is equivalent to v cos alpha and the vertical component which is equivalent to v sin alpha. If the firearm is fired in vacuum where there is an absence of air and hence no air resistance, it would be correct to say that by the time the projectile loses all its velocity due to gravitational pull of the earth and attains a zero velocity, it can no more go upwards and that would be the vertical range attained by the bullet knowing that final velocity of the bullet will be equal to the initial velocity 
which is further equivalent to minus g t, where the time of flight is t and g is acceleration due to gravity. Final velocity o is equal to v sin alpha minus g t or you can also write it as t is equivalent to v sin alpha divided by the factor g. Now using the formula where final velocity whole square minus the initial velocity whole square is equivalent to 295 where s is the distance travelled by the bullet 0 minus v square sin square alpha is equals to 2 g s s is equal to height reached by the bullet and is therefore equal to h wherein you can also write as s is equal to h next you can write the former equation as v square sin square alpha is equivalent to 2 g h where h is height reached by the bullet or h is equal to v square sin square alpha by 2 g this is equivalent to the factor of vertical range next we will be talking about the calculation of maximum vertical range by having the maximum value of sin square alpha we shall have a maximum value of vertical range maximum value of sin alpha is 1 when alpha is equivalent to 90 degrees so maximum vertical range is equivalent to v square divided by 2g so when the bullet is fired vertically upward range will be maximum and equals the factor of 16 v square divided by 2g now dear students let us study about bullet drop the rate of fall of a bullet is determined by the use of well known formula which i will be discussing over here h is equals to half gt square where h is equivalent to drop of the bullet g is equal to acceleration due to gravitational pull of the earth its value is 32.17 feet per second it is generally taken as 32 feet per second t is equivalent to time in seconds thus a bullet will fall through a distance of 16 feet as per the calculations shown on your screen bullet drop h is equal to half g t square when t is equals to 1 h is equals to half g which is further equivalent to factor of half multiplied by the factor of 32 which is equivalent to 16 feet it may be clearly understood that the drop of bullet does not depend either on the mass of the bullet or its initial velocity it is totally independent of both the mass and velocity of the bullet whether the velocity was initial or attained during the flight thus all bullets whether moving with a small velocity of about 200 feet per second or large velocities of about 4000 feet per second will have a fall of 16 feet in one second or 4 feet in a quarter of second the difference in bullet velocities will have effect on the distance traveled as bullets with higher velocity will take shorter time for a given distance. The bullet does not continue with the same velocity during its flight. As the pressure on its nose causes resistance, it will result in gradual reduction in its velocity. The students next we will be talking about calculation of remaining velocity the remaining velocity at any time t after its projection can be ascertained the resultant velocity of a projectile projected at an angle alpha with the horizontal axis can be calculated say after time t 
from the square root of the sum of its squares of its vertical and the horizontal components. Let a bullet be projected with the velocity v at an angle alpha to the horizon. The vertical and horizontal components of velocity v after time t would be v minus sin alpha minus gt in the vertical direction and v cos alpha in the horizontal direction. Horizontal component has not changed because there is no gravitational pull in that direction. But the vertical component which had its value as v sin alpha at the start gets reduced to v sin alpha minus gt after time t due to gravitational pull of the earth. Resultant velocity is equal to vr which is further equivalent to a factor of under root of v sin alpha minus gt whole square plus the factor of v cos alpha whole square which is further equivalent to under root of v square sin square alpha plus g square t square minus 2 gt v sin alpha plus v square cos square alpha which is further equivalent to under root of v square in brackets sin square alpha plus cos square alpha minus 2 v g t sin alpha plus g square t square which is equals to under root of v square minus 2 g v sin alpha t plus g square t square as sin square alpha plus cos square alpha is equivalent to 1. Next we will be studying about horizontal range determination. Horizontal range is the distance travelled by the bullet horizontally. If a bullet is fired with the velocity v at an angle of elevation alpha, its components in vertical direction and horizontal direction would be v sin alpha and v cos alpha respectively when air resistance is not taken into consideration. Distance travelled by the bullet in horizontal direction will be r equals to t multiplied by effective velocity which is the horizontal component of initial velocity v which is further equivalent to t multiplied by the factor of v cos alpha where t is equals to travel time. Knowing that earth's pull will affect the vertical component of velocity and not the horizontal component, let us calculate the total time of flight t by finding maximum height reached by the bullet when its velocity becomes zero and does not go up any more. From the equation, final velocity is equals to initial velocity minus gt at highest point. Final velocity is equals to zero v sin alpha minus g t is also equal to 0 or v sin alpha is equals to g t or you can also write it as t is equivalent to v sin alpha divided by g. Total time of bullet flight that is capital T is equals to 2 t because bullet took half the time to reach the highest point. Putting the value of t is equals to v sin alpha, total time of bullet flight capital T is equals to 2t which is further equivalent to 2v sin alpha. So horizontal range is equals to capital T multiplied by the factor of v cos alpha which is equal to 2t into v cos alpha which is further equivalent to 2v sin alpha into v cos alpha divided by g which you can also write it as v square 2 sin alpha cos alpha divided by g which can further be written as v square sin 2 alpha divided by g as 2 sin alpha cos alpha is equivalent to sin 2 alpha. So, maximum horizontal range is equal to v square divided by g when sin 2 alpha is equals to 1. 
if we are putting 90 degrees in case of 2 alpha that is sin 90 degrees equals to 1 then the value for alpha is 45 degrees means at 45 degrees one get maximum horizontal range which is equal to v square divided by g it is correct that in vacuum the trajectory is maximum horizontal range would be obtained at an evaluation angle or an elevation angle of 45 degrees and its value would be equal to v square divided by g in air however a maximum range is obtained when the angles are in the range of 29 degrees to 35 degrees depending on projectiles point 303 mark ammunition acquires the maximum range at an elevation angle of 34 degrees in 42 minutes next we will be talking about the experimental determination of trajectories the test firing for the trajectory determination is done from a machine test or from a bench test after ascertaining the proper functioning of the baseline. The height of various ranges from the baseline of various screens gives the height of the trajectory at distances of the screens. Plotting the distances and heights gives the trajectory of the projectile. There should be large number of shots to ensure better accuracy. Another method for trajectory determination is to have firing in a large and wide uninhabited area of appropriate dimension to cover range of projectiles of which the trajectories are required to be determined with necessary precautions to ensure that no accidents due to stray bullets take place. Next, dear students, we will be discussing about the escape velocity. Escape velocity is the velocity with which a projectile should be projected in the vertically upward direction so that it does not return to earth. The gravitational pull of the earth is overcome by the projectiles flying at a very high velocity. Missiles flying over 8 kilometers per second would orbit the earth in a trajectory. If the velocity is more than 11 kilometers per second, the object will fly away into space and will not return to earth. The velocity at which an object escapes the gravitational pull is termed as escape velocity. The relation which I will be telling you gives the value of the escape velocity. Escape velocity is equals to v square g r where g is equals to gravitational acceleration r is radius of earth and value of escape velocity is 11 kilometers per second the rotation of the earth around its own axis tends to hurl away the projectiles but the effect is too little to affect practically the small ammunition trajectories. Yaw is something which only has real relevance to rifled ammunition. This is due to slight destabilization of the bullet as it leaves the barrel and is probably the result of excessive spin on the bullet. This causes the bullet to describe an air spiral while at the same line having a spin around its own tail axis. It shows the yawing effect of a bullet on your screen. Drift is a flight or in the flight takes place significantly due to several reasons such as velocity of the wind, spin of the bullet in rifled firearms. So far as velocity of the wind is concerned, it will make a drift to the left when blowing from the right of the bullet to its left. If the wind direction is from left of the bullet to its right, the bullet will get a drift to its right. If the motion of the wind is in the same direction as that of the bullet, it adds to the velocity of the projectile. Similarly, the wind blowing against the direction of bullet will decrease 
the velocity of the bullet also. If the wind is blowing from any other side or at any angle, it will make a change both in the velocity of the bullet as well in the direction. The extent of deflection has been shown by the equation where deflection is equals to T multiplied by V cos theta, where theta is the angle at which the wind acts and V is the velocity of wind, T is the time for which the wind acts. The amount of drift due to wind blowing from the right of the bullet will cause it to drift to the left. Rear wind will have an increasing effect on the velocity and a nose wind will have a decreasing effect on the velocity. The amount of wind drift when striking the bullet at 90 degrees can be calculated as shown. D is equals to T multiplied by W or if you are putting the value of W then D will be equal to T multiplied by R by V where D is equal to deflection of bullet by wind, R is equals to range, V is equals to muzzle velocity, T is equals to time of flight, W is equals to cross wind speed. Spinning affects the bullet in many ways. Firstly, by improving its range and aim and secondly, by introducing drift. Drift takes the direction of the spin. When the spin is towards the right, the projectile drifts towards the right. Similarly, if the spin is towards the left, the drift of bullet will be towards the left only. With a 0.303 inches rifle, the drift is about 13 inches at a range of 1000 yards. It is quite small and does not have much significance in the operation of firearm. In some rifles, there may be a sideways jump of the barrel which could compensate the drift or even overshoot the drift. So far as problems of forensic ballistics are concerned, the drift being negligibly small does not gain importance of consideration. The drift, though negligibly small, can be easily compensated by giving a calculated tilt to the right, to the left or to the right that is opposite to the direction of twist. It will result effectively in removing the effect of the drift to a range of about a couple of thousand meters. In a study conducted by Folio etc. all, multi-detector CT technology and multi-planar reformation post-processing was used in trajectory analysis which helped in time saving and gave accurate image based results of the wound. Using this technology, wound path can be identified and trajectory angles can be measured and illustrated mathematically in ballistic city phantoms. Now I will be talking about specifically the Nibin system or the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network. Nibin system may be termed as a fingerprint bureau storing thumbprints of firearm, that is the characteristics of a particular firearm. The identifying data from all licensed and factory made firearms when generated for use are stored in the computers of the Nibin system. This data proves useful in the identification of firearms used in criminal activities. The fired ammunition available at the scene of crime can be useful in the identification of firearm from the recorded data saved in the Nibin. Nibin consists of the four subsystems which are first is the data acquisition system or the DAS remote, regional server, match points and rapid brass identification. Next, if we are talking about the advantages of this system, comparison is quick and takes much less time for completion. Comparison can be done at any point of matching where the facilities are available. The deformed bullet can also be examined by this system. If we look into the disadvantages, they are 
that the system is of no use if the weapons are of not registered or if they are not registered in that particular system. This country made weapons enjoy freedom and criminals enjoy liberty. If the firearm is altered, its characteristics will change and become unsuitable for comparison. Why? Because you have registered the firearm with the original characteristics and once they have changed, you have not again re-registered it. The identification may become difficult if not impossible in many cases where clarity of marks is not good. Many firearms used in crimes in our country like India are smuggled firearms or improvised ones. Their records are not available anywhere. Next, if the firearm is not used repeatedly, no identification can again be made through the Nibin system. There is in fact a long list of ballistics identification systems available and some of them are first is Nibin in India, then is Arsenal in Russia, Condor by SBS Company Limited, Sibyl a French system, Ballistica in Turkey, Fireball in Australia, Tais a Russian system and an Evo Finder by Scan BI technology. Next, talking about the IBIS system or the integrated ballistics identification system. While Federal Bureau of Investigation or FBI was developing the drug fire system, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives developed another system called IBIS or the Integrated Ballistics Identification System. Before the integration of the system to be called as IBIS, it was only capable of comparing bullets and was called bulletproof. Later, it was upgraded to handle cartridge cases and then retained as the integrated bullet identification system or IBIS. As a result, from 1993 to 1998, the United States had two automatic ballistics identification systems. In place one was drug fire and the other one was IBIS. Although there were attempts to interconnect the two systems under the National Integrated Identification Network that is the Nibin system, it remained an unsuccessful exercise till the year 1999 when FBI and the ATF finally decided to phase out drug fire and standardize Nibin on the IBIS platform only. When the evaluation revealed the superiority of IBIS over the other system. In the year 2005, FTI, that is Forensic Technology Inc., released its bullets, tracks, and in 2006, brass track systems, which enabled both two dimensional and three dimensional imaging of bullets and cartridge case stria, that is the striation markings on the cartridge cases. This not only enabled users to take quantitative measurements of the surface topography of a bullet and cartridge case, but also considerably enhanced the capability of the IBIS system. The adoption of IBIS as the Nibin standard made FTI the world's biggest manufacturer of automatic ballistic identification systems. There are some important points which are worth mentioning over here. First is the system cannot at present replace the comparison microscopes. Both the system and comparison microscopes are essentially required. A system may generate 10 to 20 top candidates as possible matches. The firearm examiner uses this list to select actual bullets or cartridge cases from the OCI that is outstanding crime index for visual examination under comparison microscope. It is the examiner who makes the final decision as to whether there is a match and it is he or she who testifies to this in court. Next, if we talk about the modern technology for stria comparison, then in the year 1989, 
terrible increase in drug related crimes in USA resulted in exceptional accumulation of fired ammunition submitted in the crime laboratories for forensic analysis. To avoid the difficulty, FBI selected only important cases of special attention. It was not possible to compare each bullet and cartridge case which required plenty of manpower. However, to make things easier, large photographs of the bullets and the cartridge cases related to the important and specific cases were pinned onto the wall behind the comparison microscope. Rough estimations were used to determine whether there were any similarities between the exhibit on the comparison microscope and those on the wall. Understanding that this could be done carried out more effectively with the use of modern technology, the FBI sponsored research into digitalizing the photographs. Then the images were displayed on a high resolution computer screen in a tiled pattern surrounding the exhibit under examination. The system was called as drug fire. In the year 1992, FBI began the drug fire system. The drug fire system is a database of firing pin of spent cartridges recovered from the crime scene. A computer network was set up so that the firearms examiner could search the database for impressions. This enables the examiner to determine if a crime scene cartridge or one test fired from the seized weapon matched any of the impressions in the database or not. When a match is found, the arrangements can be made to procure the actual cartridge so that a physical microscopic comparison can be made. The method resulted in yielding more effective results very quickly. Next is ballistic fingerprinting. The development of bullets and cartridge case database led to the concept of ballistic fingerprinting. Under this program, each new weapon is test fired at the factory and the cartridge is recovered. Breech block and firing pin impression are stored in a computer database. In cases where cartridge are recovered at a crime scene and recovery of fired weapon is absent, the breech block marking and firing pin impressions can be compared with those in the database. Though it sounds like that it will be very effective program, there are quite a few problems such as it is very expensive to be implemented. It is quite often hard to substantiate a paper trail of a gun purchase. False identification documents may be used. Sales may be made illegally. The genuine owner may lose weapons. Weapons may be stolen from the original owner. In case of firing of several rounds within a short time, firing pin impressions and breech block marking like bullet stria may change enough so that they can no longer be matched to a test fired cartridge. External ballistics is the study of motion of projectiles when it leaves the muzzle end of the barrel and it travels to the target. The study also comprises of conditions which can subsequently affect projectile trajectory. Moreover, computational equations are also required to determine the trajectory. In addition to it, the bullet found at the scene of crime requires certain class and individual characteristics. The comparison of fired bullets and cartridge cases are carried out by certain automated identification systems. Now, this is time for your self-study. If you want to learn more for enhancing your knowledge, you may log on to our website of www.cec.nic.in for assignments, MCQs, quizzes and LORs and other materials. Till then, keep studying and goodbye.